days ago, but now they can call me Batman. What up? Welcome back once again to the Necro Zoo. I am Bone. And in this one, let's go ahead and add one more figure to my McFarlane DC Multiverse collection. Now, today we will take a look at Midnighter. Now, actually, <laughs> not a big connection to Midnighter or really know a lot about him. Honestly, uh, if I had to guess, it would be sometime in the early 2000s when I did start hearing about Midnighter. And although at that point I was kind of starting to, you know, not really be too interested in comics, uh, I did know that he he sort of had that vibe of like Punisher or Ghost Rider or Lobo, you know, like sort of that anti-hero you know, sort of crazy crime fighter uh, vibe to him. Um, but since I was like, you know, not really paying attention to comics that much anymore, I just sort of, you know, lost track of any sort of follow up on how, you know, he was doing in the comics. But then I did kind of see like that his popularity didn't grow as much as I thought it would, because at first I thought he was going to be something of like one of those kooky vigilantes that people like to root behind um recently what i do know is that he's in a group called the authority and there's rumors that they're gonna make you know a live action version so i figured it'd be interesting to pick him up they didn't really have too much expectations now i do want to talk about the reveals and the <laughs> first looks because as far as i know only dc direct ever made you know a statue figure of him you know one of their five points of articulation style figures. So one of the major motives to actually picking this guy up was just if we ever end up building a whole authority team. But I have to say that when I did see the images, I was pretty let down because right away you can see that he is just a reuse of the future state Batman. Now actually, Dark Detective, is one of my favorite underrated figures i really love that figure i do have the version here with no coat but always thought that was a pretty cool figure and it jumped straight out of the pages of the comic into our hands in action figure form so to see basically mcfarlane just completely reuse the figure except for a, a couple of slight changes it kind of was a letdown to me <laughs> and honestly, I did think that I'm going to buy this. I'm going to open it. I'm not even going to review it. I'm just going to put it on the shelf and I'll move on to the next figure. But surprisingly enough, you know, a lot of times with McFarlane figures, you can't really decide or make any decisions until you actually open up the figure and get them in hand. And once I did that, I did see a lot of potential to actually make this figure resemble more of how he is portrayed in the comics at least in the way his costume is because for me the way they actually executed it was not doing it for me but once i had him in hand i could actually start seeing the potential of what i could do with him now he does look pretty violent in the packaging but let's go ahead and take a closer look at him but first he does come with your standard black DC Multiverse stand. Now, of course, these are not really needed, but sometimes they do come in useful. He also comes with his data file card. On the front, you do have an image from the comics of Midnighter. Now, interestingly enough, this is labeled as DC Classic. And as far as I know, all the DC Classics that we have received are patterned after the way they actually look uh, referenced in the comics and this is one that <laughs> does not look like how he looks in the comics i mean with some slight changes he could look more like he does in the comics but not the way that mcfarlane actually produced him on the back you do have some information if you want to read up on that we'll hold on to that now, surprisingly, he does come with some accessories. 
He comes with two alternate fists. Pretty cool. We'll hold on to those. And he also comes with his two sort of clubs or bats that he basically uses in the comics. That they have more of like a nightstick shape to them. But, I mean, the clubs look cool, executed nicely. So I will accept those and look forward to using them. Now, let's go ahead and take a closer look at him. But we're going to take a look at the standard release version first. Now, first impressions, as I said before, just too much light color going on on this figure. They went with an actual, like, almost white gray. Uh, you do have the classic Midnighter symbol on the chest. But looking at him, first impressions actually makes me just see, just screams Dark Detective. And that is a reason why I was pretty certain that I was not going to enjoy this figure. I mean, basically, the the changes are minimal, but he does have a couple of changes. Looking at the head sculpt, I mean, don't necessarily know how close this is to Midnighter in the comics, because from what I've seen on his mask, he usually has like some sort of like shapes and forms on it. And this is just a basic round mask. Now, one thing I do like, I think that if I ever make, you know, my own DC Multiverse custom figure, this will actually be the head that I use because it is the closest that matches the, the way my mask is. Pretty close. Mine is more of a luchador style, and this is just, you know, a superhero style. But he does have the open mouth, the all-black scheme, and, of course, the chin strap, which is very signature to my mask, is to have this sort of, like, peak right here under the chin. Uh, I don't really want to go into articulation because we're all familiar with it, but he does have the shoulder pads. You know, the arms have the regular articulation. Different hands, I could say that, than the Dark Detective. But then you go down to the lower body, and I mean, he does have waist movement. You got the legs, but just the off-putting, like almost white color just really <laughs> is really off-putting to me. Um, plus, when you look at the belt, he has the, the rope that does not go with him. Another little, like, sort of buckle that hangs that it doesn't really fit with the Midnighter character. And then you have a holster, which, I mean, could work. But the way it's connected to the belt just doesn't really work for me. Especially because he has this leg holster strap that, in the comics, is usually on the right side. But, I mean, even if it's on the left, it could work. But not the way they executed the holster and then moving down i mean you do have the die cut that is be because he's supposed to ride a vehicle that we haven't seen yet now there is one thing that is different i mean besides the the different jacket sleeves that have like these straps on them only thing i could see that is different and it's kind of interesting because this means that mcfarlane can like glue on different parts if he would like to is that they added little pouches like right behind the boots and these are not actually on the dark detective so i thought it was rather interesting that they were able just to add a new piece and they're all glued on to the original mold that that this is based off of where it didn't have the pouches so pretty interesting same leg articulation at the ankles and the boots but basically just really a letdown if i didn't have you know the <laughs> the skills to customize i would basically just put this on the shelf and never look at him again but once i did get him in hand like i said before it got the juices flowing where i had a lot of ideas that i wanted to do so let's go ahead and look at him now as i have customized him to make him look more comic accurate now first off I took them all apart. That's another thing that, like I always tell you guys, I, <laughs> I don't get a lot of footage of doing the actual repaint, but I always start off by just completely separating the figure. Um, I think first I painted the jacket because the jacket is actually like a really, really midnight blue, like where you could barely see the blue tinge in there. And I wanted to, you know, paint it a flat black. So I actually sprayed it, but from far away. But what that ended up doing is that it's now it is more of a black color, 
but you could kind of see a little bit of the original blue peeking through some of the little crinkles in the in the actual jacket and then also the inside is the original color so it has that little you know tinge of blue in there so i thought that you know worked perfectly now i also noticed that in the comics the chest symbol usually has a peak to it you know down at the bottom and the way mcfarland executed it they just made it like a block and although you can find some images where it looks like this basically 90 percent of the time it has an actual peak so i went ahead and taped it off and painted that as well and made it a nice crisp line that it actually goes into a peak perfectly right below the midnighter symbol and this just makes it look a lot more like midnighter from the comics now the only thing i did with the arms is i actually added the silver to the buckles and to the little kind of metal loops on the jacket just to give it you know a little bit of accent paint and also i painted the knuckles on the gloves, which I think sometimes they do show that in the comics. And also I did paint the knuckles on the fists that come with this figure because these fists actually work really well with him and give him a little bit of attitude, which actually works out really well. So, so far really made some awesome changes just to make him look a little bit more like Midnighter from the comics. Now, the belt was a big thing that I wanted to change. So I did actually remove the rope, remove that little buckle that was hanging and detach the holster from the belt. So that it looks more like a standard utility belt that just has pouches and a couple of canisters and stuff like that without having all that stuff hanging off of it. And another thing I wanted to change was he actually had this gap at the belt that was really recognizable to the dark detective and i actually wanted to cover that that way it would look like a, a a whole belt without having that little gap above the buckle and interestingly enough i ended up using one of the straps that was holding the holster to the belt to cut a perfect piece that fit in there i warmed it up to like make it soft and then i pushed it into that gap and then i added super glue and just held it in there and once I painted it all black, and now it looks like it originally came in this whole complete piece. And all together with this work, it actually doesn't remind me so much of, of the Dark Detective anymore. It has, you know, gives it a little bit of separation from the original figure this was actually made for. And that's basically what I was going for, was try to separate this one from the Dark Detective that that way your mind could look at this Midnighter and not just right away see, you know, the Dark Detective in there. So the belt really came out really well. I'm, I'm happy with that. Now, the holster, I actually wanted to attach where it has this thigh strap here. But you do have the thigh swivel. So I wanted to do it where it wouldn't interfere with the articulation of the thigh swivel. So I had to, you know, glue it perfectly on there, just right above the thigh cut. And you could still manipulate the thigh cut without the holster getting in the way. But that just makes it feel a little bit more Midnighter than before. Now remember that he would also had those little bat peaks on the shin guards. And surprisingly enough, they actually had a little line that you could use as a guide to cut those off. And then I gave it another cut to soften the edge so it didn't look, you know, such at a right angle. So I had a little bit of smoothness to it. And I knew that all the cuts that I made would actually blend in once I went back and painted it black to cover up, you know, any imperfections. But what cutting off those little ears does is makes it more Midnighter and less Batman. And then in the end, I just gave him that complete satin black finish. Now this really looks like Midnighter from the comics. So now I'm really happy with this. Now, I'm not gonna say this is, you know, gonna be one of my favorite figures, but I definitely enjoy him more now with, you know, the work that I put into him. And if we ever do build an authority lineup, then this is the Midnighter that I will actually 
you know, use to display with them. Now, I also did paint the clubs because that gray, for some reason, it just didn't feel, <laughs> once again, like Midnighter. So I painted the clubs, and once you put these in his hands, he looks really awesome. Just wanted them to match up more of, like, when I think of Midnighter, I think of, you know, noir, black on black. And it just felt, you know, like it matched better to have these in a black color. So basically, as I said before, you don't have to do this. This is just what I enjoy doing with my figures. I enjoy making them a little bit more comic accurate, adding some paint and making them more to my liking. So honestly, it's not necessarily that I have to do this, you know, sp sprucing up and, and, and customizing for these figures. I've done this for my entire collecting career. But anyways, guys, he looks pretty good. Buy him and keep him in his standard release if you want to. But I just enjoy taking him to that next level. But you guys, keep hunting out there. Keep collecting. Keep customizing. And I will see you on the next one. Call me Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Batman.